Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and fall is here which means it's time for a nice comfy poncho. The fabric I'm using today is from Marcus Fabrics. It is a Primo soft flannel plaid. There's lots of different patterns to choose from. This blue is going to go great with my jeans and it's going to be very comfortable. I would recommend washing and drying this first. I just put it in the wash on a gentle cycle and then I put it in the dryer until it was almost dry. And then I just laid it out and smoothed it with my hands to let it dry. Plaids will come with two different selvages on them. The one side will have a nice finish and the other one often will have these little threads that are poking out. Those threads are traveling threads and in this case those threads are the longer white ones running down. We're going to sew and cut with this edge that has the travelers on it and leave the nice edge so we don't have to put any hems on it. The next thing we're going to do is fray the edges. Most times you're going to be able to see threads that are running right down in the pattern. I want to take the line that's most noticeable and trim so it's equal. This is going to give me a straight line to start pulling all of those threads out. After I've trimmed off that edge, I want to do a small zigzag. It doesn't have to be tiny. You just need it to cover a couple of the threads. Take one of the lines and follow that with your foot of your machine and just do a zigzag all the way down. I'm going to use a dark navy thread so that you don't see it. Start at one end and stitch all the way down. To make it easier to fray this edge, we need to just trim off this little edge on both sides. We only need to trim a very small amount and just go to the line where you want to stop, which is where your zigzag stitch is going to be. The other edge is that edge with the travelers. Just a small little amount. Take your fabric and fold it in half so the selvages are matching and you have this fold. If you have any wrinkles, it would be good if you were to press that. The wrinkles will actually prevent the threads being pulled because they'll tangle those threads. Sometimes just with your hand, you're going to be able to pull a couple of the threads to start with. Once you have a few, leave the fabric as flat as you can as you're pulling those threads. Just hold the fabric flat as you pull those threads. Start from the fold and pull down. If you try to pull the threads through the fabric, you're going to gather it and that gathering is going to make it hard for those threads to come off. The first threads are easy to pull out because they were loose right at the end. The following are going to be taken right from this fold. I like to use a stiletto and I'll just go in between those fibers and pull out my first thread. And that's the thread that's going from selvage to selvage. If you pull one of the threads going the lengthwise, you'll see that it's not going to pull. By just doing one thread at a time, it's not tangling up with the thread next to it. I'm going to continue taking all of those threads off until I hit my zigzag mark. It only took me about five minutes to fray one inch. Because of it staying flat, there was no tangles. That zigzag stitch has made it so no other threads are going to be able to come off, which is what I want, especially when I'm wearing it. When you get the one side fringed, fringe the second side. Then take that fabric, fold it in half, so the selvages are meeting and the fringed ends are meeting. Once it's folded together, you have a fold. I want the hem the same size as the fringe. Take the corner and just fold it. And you'll know where that mark is. And just put a pin and unfold it. So now I know this side and this side are going to be about the same size. The measurement is about 34 inches, which means this is going to be 34 inches and it doesn't have to be exact. The top part here 
is going to be a collar right along that fold so that from that fold over measure 15 inches and put a pin. So we need to cut out this area. Leave yourself about an inch seam allowance and follow one of the lines and cut out this square. So you're cutting out that area that has that travel stitch on it. Cut them both out separately so you can follow the lines. We're going to stitch this area together and stitch it at about one inch because we're going to do a flat seam to cover anything. So match the right sides together and stitch one inch right from this point coming down. Here is this nice wide seam. Continue cutting this little area right till you get to that stitching line. So now the seam has this flap in it. Take this top piece and move it out of your way and cut this bottom seam in half. And you can use scissors. This larger top seam is now going to cover the bottom one. Open it up so you can see the seams, the short one and there's the longer one. You're going to take that longer seam and fold it right over covering that other one and it sort of has this bigger flap. And then as you do it, you're going to be able to fold it down. So the seam is all inside. I'm going to continue pinning all the way up to this collar. So you're going to be able to top stitch that fold down. This was the original stitching and that's the fold. Just top stitch it down all the way. And when you get to the end, just go back and forth a little bit just to anchor this down. Now that seam looks as nice from the back side as it does the front side. So this can now be reversible. We now get to work on this collar. I want to fray that cut edge and I want to fray that edge up at the top. I'm going to do a row of zigzag, stopping and then going all the way around, going back to this corner. So as you do the side, you're going to be able to zigzag down and zigzag right over top of this seam. You can take your scissors and just snip right to that zigzag line. In order to fray the top part of this collar, you're going to have to trim off a small amount all the way around so that you're going to be able to pull those threads. With that thin piece off, I'm going to be able to fray all of these edges just like I did on the side. When you finish fringing the top, you're going to be able to fringe that side. And because you have that little snip here, you're only going to be able to trim so far. With those edges frayed, you're now done. That extra fringe part that you did last is a collar. That flat seam that you did is on a shoulder and it doesn't matter what side you wear it on. The poncho is now in that triangular shape, but it has this really nice collar. One fringed edge and a nice flat edge. Not only can you wear it on either shoulder, if you put it right in the center, you can have it open up so the collar is flat on both sides. So depending on how you want to wear it, you can embellish it. You can put some kind of embellishment on the front or you can put buttons down the collar. Having the embellishments adds a lot of character to it, but it just makes it so it's not reversible. So you can wear this three different ways. I do hope you give it a try and as always thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now!